Hi friends, welcome to today's episode of the Stewardship and Sustainability podcast series brought to you by the Why on Earth community. My name is Aaron Perry and I'm here today with Chef Maria Cooper. Hi Maria. Hey. And I'm so excited that we get to talk today with you about food, nutrition, different cultural inspirations and even familial inspirations behind food. And some of you who may know me know that food is one of my very favorite and dear passions and I like to say eating is one of my favorite sports. <laughs> and some of you may also know Chef Maria Cooper is the executive chef at the Highland City Club in Boulder, Colorado where we have many meetings, discussions, book club discussions, and a variety of authors and thought leaders, impact entrepreneurs, and others from the community come together and share uh, ideas and time together, often eating Maria's amazing magical food. And of course, we talk in Why on Earth that food is so central to our cultivation of relationships and to our connection with soil and planet and people all over the world. And it's with that in mind, Maria, I'm so grateful we get to have this discussion with you today and thank you so much for, for joining us. Mm, thank you. And Maria is the author of Heartful Kitchen, a wonderful cookbook that has amazing features in it. Uh, resources for folks that we'll be talking about and I highly encourage you all to check that out at chefmariacooper.com and so Maria I want to ask uh, obviously I've been nourished by mm -hmm. your cooking for many years now here in the community and it's one of my most favorite treats and part of the week when mm -hmm. I get to eat a meal that you create and give us what's what's the background what's the story behind how you're now nourishing so many people with food hmm well Aaron it's been a pleasure to get to know you and to feed you for a while now um, and I do love cooking at the City Club it's 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 been a pleasure I've been cooking there for about eight and a half years and Prior to that, I did um, some personal chef work and some catering, and I've often been drawn to people with special diets, special diet needs, gluten-free, dairy-free, and those folks who are even um, needing even more particular uh, care with their food, such as um, autoimmune protocol diet, FODMAPs, GAPS diets, things like that. And people come through at City Club sometimes and have very particular needs with food. And so <clears throat> over the years, um, I have been interested in putting together recipes that are incredibly clean and um, low inflammatory and all of that. And um, in fact, for myself and my own diet, um, I've had to do that and so about it's been let's see maybe five or six years ago I I got sick with I found out that I had a few different autoimmune issues and I had to get really clean with food um, ridiculously clean like no gluten no dairy no grains no fruit um, I had an issue with with insulin I I couldn't have any sugar of any kind and at the time I was um, living a very busy life teaching dance um, my partner has a son so there's there's a lot going on yeah and um, full-time job mm -hmm. and um, so I was trying to make it work in my own home and um, so I was having to find ways of cooking really simply but stocking the fridge mm. and thinking in advance and um, wanting to only cook a few nights a week and um, and so I created a bit of a system at home and I was inspired to start to write things down and friends and family for years have been asking me 
to give them recipes as mm. well. And so it started culminating into um, this idea of, of writing a book. And this was about five years ago. So anyways, that was the, that was the start of what is Heartful Kitchen today. But it's been a five year project and um, a lot of different inspirations. That being one, the, um, the diet piece of it. Um, another piece, uh, you mentioned the, the familial piece. And mm -hmm. so my, my grandmother, who's probably my number one biggest food inspiration, um, she's 100 years old now, Lebanese grandmother. And uh, when I was growing up, I would spend weeks during the summer with her and we would cook Lebanese food together. And so I definitely uh, fell in love with food at a very young age, mm -hmm. and um, and and it was just a blast spending time with her and being very slow with food, and getting my hands into lamb and you know flavoring it up with lemon and garlic and parsley and tasting the raw lamb before we rolled it up into into balls and doing you know everything we did with it, uh, putting it into pastry and putting it into the oven, and it was just really special times. So um, many inspirations. She wrote a cookbook, mm. and I, mm. it's not published, but that is a, that is a goal of mine to, uh, to get that to press at some point. And cool. the, um, the publishing company, this is a self-published book, and I have created a publishing company called Mary Rose Press, and her name is is Mary, and her middle name is Rose, so that is so after her. Yeah. And so you can obviously publish her book through that yeah. press. Yeah, I hope to do so. That is so wonderful. Wow. Yeah. I my connection with with food is very closely tied to my time with my grandmother in the kitchen as well, and she uh, was Slovenian, oh. and so we had this incredible connection to old ethnic recipes and traditions and what a, what a joy to have that that direct thread and, and for you to be carrying that forward and sharing that now with so many people the way that you are and mm -hmm. one of the things I'm struck by and you, you are uh, of course a, a, a bit of a celebrity here in the community with your food <laughs> um, so many folks just absolutely rave about the meals you create mm. and one of the things that strikes me as incredibly precious in there is that these are delicious flavor bursting experiences that are also so nutritious and mm. so nourishing for for us and it's it's clear when you're dishing out for people one by one there's so much love in what you're doing Mm. And I, I imagine that it has something to do with the relationship with your grandmother and mm. where you're coming from when you're preparing yeah. food for people. Yeah, and my mom too. Mm. You know, mm. when I um, I'm the youngest, and um, I think busyness was like a, a thread in my family growing up, mm. both with my grandmother and my mom. But what by the time I was uh, I don't know exactly, I want to say 10 or 11, my, my mom um, went back to grad school and so she was quite busy, but when my, my older siblings were, were young, she was at home. And <clears throat> so I just have memories of her being so full, so busy, but she would, she would somehow make space to come home and prepare these amazing dinners every night. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom is a fantastic cook, like the best. Like when I when I go home, every time I go home, it's like it's like it's the best food I've ever had. Wow! You know, so um, you know, simple simple things like um, she makes fish better than anybody. So there's a, mm. a recipe in the book called uh, Babe's Baked Fish, and my mom's my mom's name is Linda, but um, everyone calls her Babe. In her family and um, so this dish is generally made with cod but you can make it with with any any white fish really and it has uh, pistachio and um, 
citrus zest, and I make it with ghee because I, I think ghee is a very tasty, healthy fat to cook with, but you can do it with coconut oil or um, chicken fat or <clears throat> another healthy fat. And um, it's so easy, you just put everything in a casserole and stick it in the oven and bring it out and baste it with the fat and the lemon juice. And so she had this way of creating dishes that were very simple and very healthy and um, incredibly delicious. So yeah, it was my grandmother in the summers or when we would go see her. But um, throughout life, um, my mom definitely nourished us mm. like through mm. the busyness and and that's what I'm trying to do with this book you know um, is is remind people that you know it's not so bad to be busy like we are going to be busy we're getting busier it seems with our cell phones and our iPads and everything that we're multitasking doing but it's so important to continue to nourish ourselves yeah. And um, frankly, we're not nourishing ourselves when we go out to eat so often. Mm -hmm. Even when we go to, um, you know, the whole paycheck grocery store and choose to have mm -hmm. dinner there mm -hmm. over and over, like we think we're nourishing ourselves, but um, when we do it so often, it's um, we're not choosing the healthiest oils to put into our bodies and to <clears throat> to make choices at home. We're saving time, we're saving money, um, we can eat organic vegetables at prices that aren't exorbitant. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's important to look at the fats that we are, we're cooking with. And so there's lots of tools in the book um, that talk about this. Not to come from trying to be a perfectionist about food, because that's not what it's about. Um, it's about relaxing around food, really. But having all the information of how can we eat a nutrient-dense diet. Um, you know, I think a lot of folks are are eating a more of like an empty calorie diet, um, and because it's quick, it's quick to choose um, more of a carb-rich diet, yeah. and it's fun. But um, but when we're choosing foods like um, you know, hearty vegetables, color-rich vegetables, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. organic proteins. Um, we're choosing nutrients, and the calories that we're eating have more vitamins and minerals in them. Mm -hmm. So there was, um, there's a, a toolbar at the bottom of each recipe in the book, and right now the toolbar relates to uh, healing diets that particular doctors recommend for for patients and some some examples of these diets are are um, FODMAPs and GAPS diet and autoimmune protocol plant paradox um, originally when I created this this healing diet toolbar it was going to include vitamins and minerals so let's say for example this lemon zested garlicky broccoli dish. Yeah, I just I just opened to this and it's a beautiful image. And so I, yeah. I think I've probably eaten this before. <laughs> and uh, I assure you it's delicious. So yeah, I see at the bottom there is this um, health food bar right so this, this guide. So what what are these what Yeah, are these so so let's say you follow a FODMAPS diet. Um, what is that, by the way? I'm not so, really familiar with that. Yeah, so certain, certain diets that I have in this book, let's say, so, so a good friend of mine, um, David Tusek, who works in the building uh, that, I, that I work in, the Highland Building, um, David helped me some with this project. And um, brilliant man, brilliant doctor, part of, he started Cloud Medical. Mm. And um, so David inspired me to create this, this medical toolbar. And um, so FODMAPS diet is a, um, is a diet that he might recommend to a patient who potentially is struggling with a gastrointestinal issue and who tests, whose test shows up in a way that says, okay, this, this is indicated that this person might need to follow this diet. Mm. And so for the broccoli dish, um, if you're following a FODMAPS diet, cruciferous vegetables are in no. Okay, so this and means so no that go. Means, that means zero. a no go. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but then we have plant paradox. Yeah, and then you can have it if you're plant paradox. I'm not, not going to take the time here yeah. to go through 
all of this, but um, but if you follow these diets, this book, if you follow one of these diets, this book will be helpful um, in giving you guidance around each recipe. Uh huh. That's so, incredible. It's such a resource. Yeah, it's a resource that in that way, and it could be a resource for um, for uh, healing healing doctors in that way as well yeah. so so I was saying a moment ago I was uh, considering having vitamins and minerals on this as well and as I started to look through there's just way too many um, mm -hmm. like in every recipe there's there's so much and it's almost just like what's the point uh -huh. um, because every recipe um, is very mineral rich vitamin rich so um, yeah, it does you it, it does a good service to to um, to look at um, vitamin and mineral rich foods as much as you can nutrient dense foods and a book like this can help. Yeah, so my my takeaway, uh, sort of reiterating this for our audience, is that we don't each need to become the expert that you are, and and you with access to other experts like medical doctors, we can get the book and use it as a guide through our own uh, healing journeys, our own quality of life improvement journeys, whether it's having an issue with gluten or dairy or other inflammatories, mm -hmm. other uh, potential conditions, this is a resource any number of us can use and, and get wonderful results. Right, and you know, you, you know that when using these recipes, um, you are, taxing the body as little as possible. Mm -hmm. There's no nightshades in this book as well. Um, nightshades are, for those of you who don't know, vegetables that grow at night, uh, potatoes, um, eggplant, peppers, tomatoes. Um, so... The whole book is night, yeah, nightshade free. Nightshade free, grains amazing. free. There's no fruit in this book mm -hmm. except for citrus. Um, so for those sensitive beings, this is a good book for you. For those of you who don't have issues with any of that, um, this is also just a highly um, flavorful book. Yeah. I talk about um, taste sensations. There's a section on that in this book, which, which is basically talking about the tongue. Um, so using taste sensations as a tool and what what you know of that is is all the flavors. So bitter, salty, sweet, sour, and then this new flavor they talk about, umami, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like miso or yeah. soy. Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese, yeah. yeah. I love umami, by the way. Right. <laughs> um, spicy, pungent, even um, this flavor, fattiness, which is mm -hmm. Which is a way, like let's say we, we toss avocado in a dish, yeah. that's going to um, move flavor around the tongue. So, wow. so because this book is, is limited in things like grains or, um, um, yeah, nothing else is coming to me at the moment, but we, we add a lot of things like citrus zest and delicious healthy fats mm -hmm. and things that really make flavors pop. So if, um, if you can think of, of friends of yours that eat, you know, that go out and eat burgers and fries and they're used to food like that, they're still going to enjoy this food because mm. it's, it's flavor heavy. Yeah, I, I, can, I can attest to that. I have had many friends enjoy this food as well. You've yeah. mentioned oils a yeah. few times, and I'm curious, tell us a little more about why certain oils are so good for us and others maybe are not that good for us. What, what's going on with oils? Right, so um, what's going on with oils? Well, we'll need like another hour for that, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, so... The oils episode? Yeah, the oils <laughs> episode. Um, so I can talk about that from my own experience, mm -hmm. and I I have experimented with um, ketogenic diet mm -hmm. relatively often. So when I'm needing to, so a ketogenic diet is um, is a high fat, medium protein, and very low carb diet, and um, and it helps if you're needing to trim up and it mm -hmm. helps if you're needing to clear brain fog and mm -hmm. um, it's it's pretty magical 
and it's difficult but I, when I do it I'll do it for like I don't know three or four weeks mm -hmm. and so I've learned a lot about healthy fats when I when I do that and um, <clears throat> what I've learned and what I've studied about is that there are certain fats that are that are really good for the body and certain fats that aren't yeah. and so the types of fats that in this book that I've suggested cooking with for high fat for high temperature mm -hmm. are um, coconut oil, uh, ghee. Mm -hmm. Which is a refined, clarified butter, is that? Yeah, ghee right? is um, butter without the milk solids. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can buy it, Yeah. And you can make it, Yeah. I usually buy it. Yeah, I know more um, and more folks seem to be using ghee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, some of my favorite fats to cook with are grass-fed beef tallow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, which chicken has fat. really good omega uh, yeah. nutrients for mm -hmm. us right chicken fat duck fat mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving we roasted a duck and made duck soup mm. and then we had all of this duck fat and we're still cooking with it and it's incredible Wow. yeah and everything just seems to um, work better in the body and so when I say I'm speaking from my experience yeah. That's my experience, is when I'm eating fats like this, it's, um, it's more harmonious. Well, I know you as a friend of many years, and I know that you're very connected to body, that you're very body-centered in what mm -hmm. you do, and you're a dancer, you, you teach dance, and I'm wondering if you can share with us a bit about that, that body connection as a dancer and how that kind of relates over to your work as a chef and your work with food? Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's a big question. Is that a, that's another episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think in general, like it's in everything that I do uh -huh. um, in, my, in my outer world, it's, and in my inner world, it's important for me to stay connected to my body. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't always, I mean, I can find myself um, really in my head at times. Mm -hmm. I think at the club, at the city club, um, I, I manage quite a bit. And, right. Um, yeah, you have a lot of responsibility. Then. And I love yeah. it, you That's know. That's the executive chef, right? Yeah, and I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But um, But if I don't go out and take that 20-minute walk, like yeah. the days that I don't do it, I notice it. Yeah. And so the balance of, um, of life is, is so important. Yeah. And, um, and, and it's important to notice like when, when things are off and notice when, it, when I gotta go out yeah. and take that walk or notice when I haven't um, stopped to eat lunch, yeah. um, when I've had too much caffeine mm -hmm. and stay in tune with with all of that because it's it's certainly not about getting things perfect because every day yeah. I don't get things perfect yeah. with yeah. regard to self care <laughs> and and just noticing like what's off how can I get back yeah um, there's a paying I, attention yeah right? what do I need now and mm -hmm. what's next and what do I need later at the end of the day does it need to be a down night do I have it in me to be social. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with this book, you know, it's been, um, it's been a journey, mm -hmm. especially the last six months putting this book together. Mm -hmm. And, um, and if I didn't, I think I may have told, told you this the other day, but if I didn't push the way that I did, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. It would have taken another year, which I'm sure you can relate to. Well, the funny thing about books that I've noticed is they don't write themselves. No. It, it takes an incredible amount of, of mm. sustained uh, energy, willfulness, discipline uh, to put something like this together. And uh, I, I am so grateful that, that you've done it because I know, knowing you and eating your food as often as I do, I know this is going to be just an amazing resource for so many folks. Folks all over the place, folks who you'll, many yeah. you'll, you'll probably never meet in person. And uh, I'm, I'm just grateful that you've done the work and taken the, the time to make this happen while you're also an executive chef at a very busy 
dining facility and doing all kinds of other things in your life as well. So uh, I am psyched. And yeah, it's funny. You know, it's not it's not really for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this this yeah. book, like on a couple different levels. So you know, when you start writing and you have a folder in your computer, uh -huh. and it's like, well, I don't really know what this book's going to be called yet. <laughs> so what do I call it? So when I first started it five years ago, it was just called an offering. Uh -huh. right? That was the name of the folder. Yeah. And because um, that's what it was, because it was like, okay, I'm giving. This is like I'm giving, I'm giving, yeah. and um, and that's what this that's what this is. Uh, I have uh, I have this coaching business that I'm yeah. that I've started and. I'm working with clients and I'm, I'm teaching them how to cook in mm -hmm. their homes. Generally people who don't know much about food. Yeah. Generally people who are suffering in some way because they're nutrient starving. You know, yes. um, they're, they're not eating nutrient rich diets. They're eating uh, empty diets. Yeah. And so, but they're really, they're really wanting to create change or else they wouldn't mm. be asking for help. Mm -hmm. So, um, and up until now, I haven't had this available. Right. So I've just been giving them the book, you wow. know, I've just yeah. been like <laughs> passing them the book, which right. has been so nice. And it's been, uh, it's been such a gift to see these recipes helping people and changing their lives and customizing them to fit people's needs because yeah. everybody's different and some people have really special um, food needs. It's such an interesting uh, observation that, that you're making that is uh, a truism I think for our culture at this point in our society that so many of us are going through day-to-day -day life with incredible caloric intake right we have a very calorie rich yeah. diet generally speaking but it's often way too often nutrient bereft nutrient devoid and we yeah. spoke about this a fair bit in, in Why on Earth, and I think it's one of the greatest opportunities that we have to improve our own health and well-being, our own quality of life for ourselves, the people around us, our families, and so on. And it is also a beautiful way to be in deeper stewardship of places, farms, soil, people growing food, cultivating food. Those two really go hand in hand. Yes. And, uh, one of the things that strikes me, Maria, and uh, you, your chefery, if that's a word, exemplifies this. When we're talking about increasing health and well-being through our food and beverage choices, this is far from an austerity program in my experience. The food you create is so abundant with flavor, is, is bursting with incredible, delightful uh, indulgence really in, mm -hmm. in the miraculous abundance of this this planet and my hope is that folks will check this out and, and experience this for themselves of course if you're visiting Denver or Boulder and can come up to the Highland City Club come yeah, for yeah. lunch um, but you know short of that this this is such a, a tremendous resource around that enjoyment of life that I believe so many of us have in our cultural heritages back generations we have all around the world rich traditions around mm -hmm. food that are healthful and really enjoyable and i know in addition to your lebanese background with your grandmother mm -hmm. you you also have had a restaurant in spain mm -hmm. and many of your dishes have just an incredible spanish uh, zest and panache uh, to them so I'm curious, tell us a little about the time in Spain and what, what were you yeah. doing there? Yeah, I fell in love with saffron. <laughs> <laughs> so there are, um, it's funny. Saffron's was, not a, a dancer, is he? No. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> so it's funny, I was making the index and um, I realized like how much saffron is in this book. Huh. It's a tremendous amount. Um, so I... Yeah, I think it was, gosh, nine years ago or eight years ago, I was um, looking on Craigslist or looking on, yeah, looking on Craigslist for a job and I saw that someone was looking for a chef for Madrid, for a place wow. in Madrid. And so 
Hmm. I thought, well, yeah, I'll look into that. And so long story short, I got hired to open up, um, help open up a restaurant um, in downtown Madrid. Wow. And it was called Harvest, and um, they wanted a chef who had been involved with organic food, and um, they wanted a bolder chef wow. that, you know, like big salads, because they don't do that in Spain. Um, so I, and I, I helped them, I helped create the menu. I had like some of my dishes, and then helped them with, with their dishes. And um, yeah, I just helped, was hired to help get it started. Mm. So I went over there for a year. And um, it was a wild experience. I didn't mm. know any Spanish, really. And I went there, and I had a team of about five or six people in the kitchen. None of them spoke English. Mm -hmm. I, just, mm -hmm. I had my, my Spanish book mm -hmm. learned on the job. And mm. uh, yeah, it was a trip. Amazing. I had my grandmother's hummus recipe on the menu, and they still do it there to my knowledge wow. I think wow. yeah pretty sure they're still open but it's it's been a number of years that is wonderful yeah is it's there a, a certain dish that you make regularly now that somehow reminds you of your time in Madrid well we do paella relatively regularly um, mm -hmm. and it's more of like techniques Mm. You know, like different broths that I learned how to do there. Mm. I worked with a couple chefs there um, that taught me a lot. So I, I had the opportunity to, to work with some great chefs mm. in that kitchen. Mm. It, was, it was lovely. It was quite an experience. I'm really grateful. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And it just, it, it, tell us a little more about the taste sensations. I want to come back to that because I, I, oh, I one, yeah. of the, one of the things that strikes me I was thinking about this the other day watching a movie with a lot of our technology of course we're recording this we have audio we have visual yeah what we don't have is aroma and flavor right and to be able to attempt to communicate just how amazing this yeah. is through audio visual is, is a bit of a challenge but sure we have words so we can attempt it right so there's this one dish in the book, um, it's called Sensational Fish uh. with spaghetti squash, anchovies, and capers. So, mm. um, and this dish, the point of this dish is to highlight all the taste sensations. So basically, you have your, your tongue and to make a dish taste really powerful, if that's what you're going for, is to hit your whole tongue and just pop it out, right? Mm. So that's what this that's what this does. So you have the sour, the sweet, the fatty, the pungent, the umami. So for example, um, I use spaghetti squash a decent amount in this book uh, because <clears throat> it's comforting, right? Spaghetti squash is is um, it's comforting, but it's very low carb. It's very low sugar. So spaghetti squash will give you the sweet, and that's the bed of this dish. Um, you have the umami from the fish because mackerel, you choose between mackerel uh, or cod in this dish, which is a very umami. On the umami scale, it's a high, it's high in the umami. Um, the fattiness comes from the cooking oil, which is your choice of coconut oil or ghee or chicken fat or tallow. Um, another sweet is the caramelized onion. You get the pungent flavor from the garlic um, more umami from the anchovy, mm. you get the sour from the white wine, um, you get more fatty from the avocado, and then, um, and then you get the broth that's underneath it. So something about this book is, um, the mineral rich bone broth, which is, um, very central to, to this, this book. Many of the recipes have bone broth as a as an ingredient so um that's all i'll say about that for now but um yeah that's a little more about fish. yeah it's it kind really of a fun recipe to try and actually uh if you if you aren't quite ready to buy the book you could go on uh, chefmariacooper.com and this recipe is on the website on the hmm. uh, on the blog so share that one. Oh yeah. My gosh. yeah you could grab that one on the website
And if, if folks are interested in your um, consulting and coaching services, sure. can they find information about that at the website yeah, as well? Yeah, actually, um, currently I'm doing free discovery sessions yeah. for the coaching. So, um, yeah, you can just schedule a 20 minutes free session with me through the website. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And maybe I'll take this opportunity to remind our audience that this is the Why on Earth Communities Stewardship and Sustainability podcast series. And today we're speaking with Chef Maria Cooper. You can get information about her amazing cookbook, Heartful Kitchen, at chefmariacooper.com. You can get information about her uh, coaching and consulting services there as well. And if any of you would like to check out any of the Why on Earth uh, media resources, audiobooks, ebooks, you can go to whyonearth.org, that's the letter Y on earth.org, and use the code Maria Cooper to get a discount on those uh, as a way to celebrate our discussion today. And uh, all this talk of food, Maria, is making me a little hungry. Are you hungry? And, well, uh, should we know, try something? I, I see there's something amazing sitting here, <laughs> and I probably cannot resist it any longer. Okay, so all right. What, what do we got? So this is a recipe from the book. Um, we have, I will let you hold it, Thank and maybe you. I'll pull the recipe up so and we can talk can about it. Yeah. So these are truffles. So I, I do have some desserts in this book. Mm. And um, these are decadent power truffles. Wow. And they have no sugar in them. They have, um, I actually did, there's this website you can go on and do the whole nutritional breakdown of mm. them. So they have, I think, like one carb in them what? or something. So can I have one? Yeah, you can have one. Okay, I'm going for this kind. Which one is this? They're the same. They just oh. have they just have different um, toppings. So this is uh, mm. pistachio dusted, and this is um, oh cocoa goodness. dusted. Oh my goodness! So you can make mm. these with carob powder or cocoa powder, and mm. the way they're made is with um, coconut milk that's been reduced a whole lot. So it's like really really thick, and then you stir in. Um, any kind of nut butter or seed butter that you like. And there's a lot of spices, there's fresh ginger, there's a lot going on Is in there. Is there a little cardamom? I'm, I'm getting there's, um, something. Maybe. So there's ginger, there's lemon zest, there's orange zest. Wow. There's, um, there's, so they're sweetened with stevia, but if you can't do stevia, you can do um, any kind of sweetener that works for you. I like liquid stevia because it doesn't have um, it doesn't affect your blood sugar anyway mm. in any way and it's um, it's not bitter like powdered stevia mm. and there's not that much in in the recipe. These are amazing. Good. There's vanilla. <laughs> yeah, and you can coat them in whatever you like. So and I I like to keep them in the freezer, and it's nice. My my partner's son he likes um, sweets and so. But he eats these and it doesn't have any effect on his, mm -hmm. you know, on his wildness. Mm -hmm. He just eats them and they actually steady him out because they have the, uh, the protein in them from the nuts. Wow. So. That is amazing. I'm so glad you like them. Mm. <laughs> and when, they, when they're dusted in cocoa, they're really just like eating chocolate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like eating a chocolate treat. But way more nutritious. Yeah, they're good for breakfast too. Mm -hmm. There's um, a mm -hmm. couple more truffle recipes in the book, and there's also a um, a uh, avocado mousse recipe, which is a really a really nice dessert. Mm -hmm. um, it's creamy oh, and so it's good. made with uh, with cashews. So. Wow, Maria, that's amazing. I might have to put a, an order in for some more. Well, you can have the rest. I can? Thank you, you can. so much. Yeah, <laughs> you wonderful. got it. So, I want to make sure that we've covered everything we wanted to discuss today before wrapping up. I know we've got a, a few minutes remaining with our episode. Is there anything on your end that you want to make sure we mention or hit on? Um... we I think we did it yeah mm -hmm. I feel like things are pretty covered nice I'd like to hear about your food 
my food. Yeah, I'd like to hear about how you're doing with, uh, with, with your cooking. And is there anything you want to talk about with your cooking? Oh my gosh. Well, I love eating. I love cooking. I'm a total amateur, and I love hanging out with experts like you. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> one of the kind of grab and go things I enjoy. Uh, throwing in my bag in the morning is just a, a big hearty salad mm -hmm. and that way I know I'm getting my leafy greens my chlorophyll my various colors I've been nice. really into cucumbers lately for some reason nice. I don't know exactly why and uh, it's soup and stew season so yeah. making things like chili blanco is uh, one of my favorites this, with turkey this or? time of year. It could be or with chicken or yeah. Um, other you know other approaches. That I usually make it with pozole in there and quite a lot of cumin. It's very like cumin intense. Yeah. And uh, cumin forward. Cumin forward. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's so comforting, heartwarming, and satisfying. What kind of chicken do you get? Do you get like chicken thighs or do you? Put a whole chicken or? Yeah, I generally enjoy uh, baking a, a number of chicken thighs that I've seasoned okay. beforehand. And I usually do that with skin off. Mm. And I'm kind of a, one of those weirdos who really enjoys baked chicken skin for some reason. Oh, is and that weird? I love it. I think that's I amazing. love it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll often have that as a treat while I'm preparing the soup and, and yeah. tearing the the meat up by hand to put into the, the soup. Um, I think I do a mirepoix a little bit at the beginning sometimes, but not every time. Mm. And it, there's usually a fair bit of garlic in there too. Um, so it's just, it's fun, it's easy. And if we make a big pot of it, uh, as you were speaking to earlier, there are often, you know, eight, 10, 12 meals in there. Yeah that can be ready to roll Definitely. throughout the week, throughout busy days. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, soups and stews right now are are amazing mm -hmm. and freezing them. And, you know, the one, one thing about these uh, recipes in this book is most of them are better the next day. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Or the day after that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and a lot of them are great in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, taking the time to <clears throat> make your own, um, your own chicken broth, your own bone broth is, mm -hmm. it makes such a difference and it's so, it's so nourishing. Is it a, is it a fairly complicated process when no. you do it? I'm wondering if folks might be a bit intimidated because it sounds like it no. could be intimidating. No, I mean, generally there's a couple different ways you can do it. So the way that we do it often is, is we like to we like to buy rotisserie chickens from mm -hmm. Whole Foods, mm -hmm. the organic ones, yeah, because they're pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. I think right now they're like nine ninety nine. Right. So we'll buy two, and we'll take the um, we'll take the meat off, yeah, and we'll make a big chicken salad for the week with that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Stick it in the fridge, and then we have two carcasses. We'll throw them in a big pot with water. And you put a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I've heard that. Because that helps. My mom that or helps grandma. take yeah. the goodness out of the bones. You mm -hmm. let it sit for an hour, turn it on, and cook it for six hours. Wow. Bring it to so a boil, you, you let, let it, it simmer. You let it sit with no heat first. No heat for an hour. For an hour, mm -hmm. and then you put it on heat. That's it. Yeah, I mean, at the last hour of cooking, you can toss in some uh, onions and celery and carrots if you want, but I don't usually. I've even heard folks will use their onion peels and their carrot ends Great. at that stage, yep. a way to use some of those things that would otherwise go to compost. Yeah, you can, and while you're cooking through the week, if you end up having those, a nice thing to do is throw those in a bag in the freezer, and mm -hmm. then when you're ready to make stocks... You got it ready. You got it ready to go. That is such a great idea. Yeah, and um, but you know, having broth, um, even without the veggies, is fine. Like yeah. it's, it still makes delicious soup because usually when you make soup, you're cooking veggies. You're chopping up veggies, sauteing them, and then throwing the broth in. So you're going to have the flavor of that veggies, those veggies anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it really helps us through these cold months to be totally. e eating soup or even like drinking that broth regularly. I have a, a recipe. It's more of like a tip. 
I think, in the book, but it, to, to be drinking broth <clears throat> as a meal or in between meals. It's called warm liquid gold. I saw that. But you, okay. um, you yeah. heat up the broth and then you, you stir in some, some fat of your choice, chicken fat or um, coconut oil or olive oil or something. Mm. Put a little bit of sea salt. You could put cinnamon or mm. something and just drink it. And it's nourishing. And it coats your belly and it prepares you for what's next. You know, I think it's a, a nice thing to do. It reminds me of a remedy that a, a dear friend, in fact, a, an old love of mine uh, taught me which is to use chicken broth when we're getting sick and adding in uh, cayenne and I think some black pepper, yeah. maybe some turmeric and a little bit of lemon juice and just drinking that and it's, it helps. And yeah. uh, so another great reason to keep some of this uh, broth on hand, right? If we start to feel that tickle in the throat or we're starting to feel worn down, it's another excellent potential remedy we can go to yeah and uh, your 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 what is it liquid gold what is it warm called? liquid gold warm liquid gold yeah that sounds really i mean similar. this woman that I'm, I'm working with currently i work with her on the phone coaching she lives back east and she works in jails every day hmm. and um she gets up really early and goes to jails and works in jails every day and wow. she drinks her broth before she goes to work every day and it's wow. like yeah saving her you know yeah. i mean she, that's how she talks about it um and i think part of all of these practices whether it's <clears throat> making broth or drinking broth or slowing down to cook a meal um it's self-care yeah. and um you may ask yourself like are you doing enough of that for yourself maybe you are i mean i'm not sometimes um, sometimes I am, but when I do that, it's <clears throat> the act of doing it that actually makes me feel more vital and gives me strength and makes me feel like I'm worth it, you know, and I'm giving myself that message that I'm, I'm worth this. That self-nourishment. Yeah. Huh? That's so powerful. Yeah, and it takes remembering and it takes doing it and practicing it just like anything else. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, Maria, thank you so much for mm. joining us. And uh, it has been such a pleasure uh, to have our discussion today with Chef Maria Cooper. Mm. Please, audience, go check out chefmariacooper.com. You'll see her amazing book, her amazing resource, her amazing cookbook and guidebook, Heartful Kitchen, there. Mm. And you can also connect with Maria there for her coaching and consulting services. And uh, Maria, it's been such a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you.